Anna Tobin. Today we have an amazing guest here today, Keith Mitchell. He is a well-kept secret among celebrities, professional athletes, top executives, and notable institutions across the globe. He has been featured in the USA Today, Sports Illustrated, Fox News, Huffington Post, People Magazine, Dr. Oz, Netflix, Men's Journal, Ebony, Essence, Wonderlust. I mean, we could go on and on and on. How does one start his journey in the journal of Keith Mitchell? How did the how did you get here? Uh, you know, that's a great question. I kind of I, I, I asked that many times, <laughs> but uh, no matter what my answer comes to, it's I'm so grateful for the experience. Well, so how did you? I guess we'll start with the beginning. How did you get involved in the NFL? Like, uh, was that your childhood dream or is that just something that you stumbled upon? No, definitely. You know, childhood dream coming up in Texas, you know, football is like a religion. And uh, one of the things that I gravitated to for the various reasons, uh, whether it be the family dynamic and really on Sundays, you know, after church, that's not really the only time that the family actually, uh, enjoyed one another, if you will. So, you know, so I think I gravitated to that for the various reasons that I felt it could bring my family together. I looked at it as how society, you know, revered athletes in the, in the community and so forth. So that began to be my endeavor. Um, and I began to realize my, my way of achieving that. Uh, one of my teachers, my coaches asked me a question, where do you see yourself in five years? And so I began to answer that question, not only answering that question, I also began to lay the bricks that was that would lay the foundation for allowing me to create what I wanted to create in my life as as a, even as a young youth, not even really knowing what I was doing, but doing it. <laughs> well, yeah. I, I remember a lot of that because when I get out of church when I was a youngster, the idea was is that there's so many kids and I, I guess as a medium sized church, there's so many kids that wanted to get out early. We were antsy, and what we wanted to do is we had enough people to play teams and games. So we went outside, we'd throw the pigskin around or hit the basketball hoop behind the church while you know parents mingled and talked and socialized with everyone. And you know you're right, football is a way that brings people together. Families get together when it's NFL. NFL time, your team's in the playoffs. So I'm in Wisconsin. Uh, I, okay. I would have worn I would have worn my Brett Favre jersey, but the green screen doesn't allow it. I'd be invisible right now. So you, you know, us unfortunately, uh, we don't have that ability here in Green Bay. But I understand uh, what it's like to have a sport where the locals feel like it's a the, the local ordained religion, and that it brings people together in sports. That's what it's supposed to do. It really is, and. Uh, so your life took a major turn while you were playing in the NFL. You were playing for the Saints and then later for the Jaguars. Uh, it's like you've lived two completely separate lives. This is true. This is true. And and how I got there, you know, my last season while I was in Jacksonville uh, making a tackle I had made many times. I was a linebacker, uh, and my, my job was to run as fast as I could into people and hit them as hard as I could, and I was pretty good at it. I was all pro at the position. Um, and, but, you know, my, my career came to an end, you know, make, doing that very thing that I had done so many times in my life. And on this particular play, I end up on my back. I, I'm trying to get up and move after a collision. Typically on a collision, you get up and you celebrate to, to build momentum uh, for the team and so forth. We, may, we had to stop in that particular play. But on this particular play, I, my body wouldn't respond. And um, so I'm laying there in front of 80,000 people at least. And millions watching and um, it was just a, 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 a you're talking about changing my life from one place one instance to another it, it was just a, a life-changing situation for me I was diagnosed with a spinal contusion I suffered paralysis for about a, about a month or so and through the process I learned conscious breathing which now I call meditation so what, what like to somebody out there that's never heard of what meditation is other than what we've seen on TV, what is meditation? How, how does it work? Well, meditation is a is really a mind practice. Um, and what you have a practice for is for when you're faced with adversity. Uh, when you think of weight training, you're, you're constantly challenging your body, your muscle to press a weight. Uh, sometimes the weight is foreign, sometimes it's a new movement, but you're constantly sharpening that muscle or, or activating that muscle so it can have a response. 
what what we lack in a lot of cases, especially in our society, now when we're faced with adversity, we're faced with problem solving, particularly it's going to show up in our relationships. And that's not just relationships in our, our romantic relationship, there's also social relationships and how we relate to the, the, the environment, the world, and how we participate in it. So through a mind practice, it gives us the ability to have that stamina to not be into fight or flight or in this emotional erratic state, but to, to be more intentional with, with our, our behavior and more intentional with the way we uh, respond. So mind practice is, is crucial to the evolution of the, the human, uh, in particular when it comes to uh, solving our problems. You know, uh, I'm a, a, a protest reporter. I covered uh, the burning down of the third precinct in Minneapolis. I was in Kenosha. And uh, I think that emotions run uh, wild. Like people aren't really taught how to uh, control their emotions or even had how to have a civil conversation uh, anymore. And it's interesting. This is something that you would think that might even be taught in school where we can teach our children to be more mindful and to be patient and learn these things. What are some of the benefits of meditation? Well, the benefits of meditation, we begin to de develop an emotional maturity, you know, like you're saying, like we can't even handle the, the, the adverse conversations. We can't even handle when things get rough. And that's really when relationships are really, you find what you actually have in a relationship is when it gets tough. It gets, you know, we're faced with adversity. I mean, that's the reason why you have the practice. And so what this does is allow us to move through the things that are a little bit uncomfortable to go into that next stage of our life. Like I said, uh, I gave the great comparisons, in my opinion, to the muscle build and how you build muscle is through the tears. And so we know what we know as we've experienced life, whether it be a social issue, whether it be uh, our own interaction, understanding with each other. Now to grow, we have to, we have to put that pressure, that same pressure as we add weight to our circumstance, with that same pressure as we deal with, well, I don't really understand what you're talking about with this, or I don't like when you do this, how can we move through it? How can we solve our problem? And really what meditation can do, it allows us to function in that way. So like I mentioned, emotional maturity. Now from an emotional maturity, we'll learn to have an emotional vocabulary to begin to articulate ourselves to really how we're feeling, not these propagandized terms of stress, anxiety, and things of that nature, but our, our own interpretation for how we interpret the language in which we're using when we reference ourselves and what we're going through. So when, we're, when you're talking meditation, uh, there's a, a whole set of things that go along with it. For somebody out there that's never heard of the term chakra, what is your chakra? Like, I know that some people, like uh, like my brother tried to explain it to me, he said a lot of it, like, is when, when, when we grew up, we did prayer, and we felt, like, energetic, this aura. Like, there's, a, it's like, I'm not quite sure what it even is. I guess that's what I'm asking. What is, what is your chakra? So the chakra is really, it's like the blueprint of the vehicle in which we're in. Right. And so what happens is like you have the root chakra, you have the, the, the sacral. Uh, they're all holding particular parts of our experiences of life. And what you'll find is when we go through a traumatic situation, the human body naturally will compartmentalize those issues that we go through into our bodies. And we hold it there because we will learn a lot of different things. But what we didn't learn and what they hadn't shown us ever was how to release the trauma. So what we do is we, we compartmentalize it, we house it in our bodies. And so through meditation, starting with the breath, because the breath is a key to this dynamic, um, is breathing uh, from the belly, diaphragm breathing, and we begin to release that trauma that's locked into our bodies. It releases our mind. Therefore, we can have an evolution of who we're choosing to be going forward on this plane. That, that's interesting things uh, like like I hear about it. It sounds like something that we need more of learning patience, <laughs> understanding. It's almost a form of long suffering and all those other wonderful things, uh, you know, m melding the, the mind and the body together. Is there any healing properties to doing yoga? Oh, definitely. The, the healing properties, because uh, what you find is, you know, it's one of those things that when I because my father's a preacher, you know, I, I grew up in the church. But what I find is you can't you can't speak anyone to a liberation. You have to be the embodiment of it. And so what a yoga gets an opportunity, it gains this opportunity to do is actually 
If you're talking about patience, well, you have to develop the patience with yourself. If you're talking about empathy, we first begin to develop that empathy with ourselves. And when we go through the process, what we'll find is we don't typically have that much patience with ourselves. We don't typically have that much empathy with ourselves. So how do we really find our way embodying this thing that we're talking about? Well, we have to go through the experience. And through a yoga practice, it actually gains us the opportunity to put ourselves in those awkward moments I call adversity. And we begin to realize I don't have to go into a fight or flight, an emotional rant. I can just breathe my way through the resolution of it. I can, I can, I can just breathe my way into it to realize how I can do it better, how I can show up better and live that life that I, I truly desire and, and crave to and, and deserve in this sense. It's our natural right as humans on this plane to enjoy this heaven that we gain here on earth. Well, I think the most imp- one of the most important things about it is it gives you a space to have free thought. Like, we, we don't even have an original thought these days because we're going from one thing to another. We see golden arches. That's what we get for dinner or lunch. We don't even, like, uh, give our, our greatest freedom, which is being able to think for ourselves. What do we want to eat? What do we want to do? Think through situations. It gives you that ability to, to actually set goals and be a better person. That's amazing. I got to ask you. I, I saw on your website, and this must have been, an in, uh, like, an exciting moment for you. You got a call from the White House. What was that uh-huh. like? Were you th- did you think it was one of your buddies playing a joke for you? They're like, uh, hey, this is the White House. We want you to come on down. Or like, like, how did that happen? No, I had been working with the Senate and Congress, um, Charles Rangel, uh, Congressman Tim Ryan. I had been working with some projects, working with veterans. I created a care plan uh, a couple years back to work with uh, veterans who were suffering with PTSD and things of that nature. So I was already kind of in that circle, believe it or not, uh, with uh, the political realm and and some of our higher up, our our leaders. And so, you know, it's one of those things when you're living in this way, it's like uh, you you expect the miracle. I think Yogi Bhajan speaks about it. I don't believe in miracles, I expect them because we are an existing walking miracle as a human. And when we speak things and we put our attention to things, things manifest, they have, we have that possibility. So, you know, by living this way uh, from even like as a child thinking I could be amongst the greatest and play amongst the great and dominate, you know, coming from nowhere, you know, a little small town outside of Dallas, Texas called Garland and, and to put myself in that position. Well, this is the same thing, you know, and this is what meditation gains us the opportunity to do. It's like, I know you believe in the creator outside yourself. We call God. But how much of us do and, and how much do you believe in yourself? You know, and I think from the standpoint of where we are in a predicament, and socially speaking, uh, we have to look at ourselves because no one's going to save us but us. And we have to find that voice within ourselves to be able to speak our truth and stand for really what we believe in. And it's crucial right now. It's like you're speaking of sports. This is the fourth quarter and we're, we're down by two touchdowns so we you know so we need that tom brady in the ranks and that tom brady in this case is you that tom brady is you and that that play is going to be made by you and so meditation in my opinion how i teach it and share it uh, is the opportunity that we can find that confidence that courage to speak and hold that space yeah, wise words i know i do talk radio during the day and i always <laughs> tell my listeners that uh you know All throughout history, there's all these people, millions of people have come and gone, but it's one or two people here that change the the balance of history. And who says you can't be that person? You have to to actually want to be. You have to learn to be uh, and create, set these goals, change, and, you know, like improve who you are. Fantastic stuff. By the way, you'll be joining us on uh, 4th of July weekend at United We Stand Cambria. Let our viewers and listeners know where can they find out more about you? Well, you know, my website's keithmitchell59.com. 59 was my jersey number. Uh, You know, I have some really amazing projects coming up. Uh, You can go to my Instagram, keithmitchell59, and I can let you know where you can find out all the things we have up and coming. But yeah, Cambria is going to be amazing. I can't wait. Uh, it's always a great time when we all come together and really that energy in that space. I, I, I believe Cambria is going to be lit up 
It uh, definitely July is. Four, the fourth, yes. <laughs> and, and we'll be live too. It'll be live for all of you guys out there to partake, and you can go to the free and equal dot org as well as we'll be live on just about every social media platform. It's going to be a great weekend. Make sure if you're home and you're practicing your social distancing or whatever it is that you're doing, don't miss out on United We Stand Cambria. It'll be a great event. Thanks, Keith.